How's it going guys? I wanted to give you a little update video on my ultimate survival rifle build. Uh, if you missed my first video on it, I have it linked down in the description box down below to check out to see what I did then and to compare the improvements that I did from then. Running this for about two years, I've noticed some things that I needed to change or wanted to change. Just a quick description on this rifle. This is a Ruger 1022 takedown in a Magpul backpacker stock. Excellent setup as it is, but adding some of the accessories makes it even better. Uh, this is my camping slash uh, backpacking slash you know road tripping type of rifle right here this is good 22 lr semi-automatic excellent ruger reputation as a 1022 this is a great setup for what this is going what, what i'm going for one of the things that you can see right here that i changed from my initial video right here let's go ahead and start with this sling this is made by ace 2 tactical paracord sling right here i have it linked in the description box down below we get a discount code uh, down there for you guys and we get a little kickback if you purchase one of these I wanted to run a paracord sling on here, but there was no real way to do that without mounting it to Magpul's stock locations right there, which I didn't like. I wanted to have this mounted to the forend, of course, as far up as possible to make it more comfortable carry or more of a natural feel. This required me to do some modification to the forend. I had to completely take it all apart, drill a hole, buy some sling studs that have the washer and nut on the back, mount that right up on there, and you can see no problem at all. This thing is solid. Magpul's polymer is actually pretty strong, so this should hold up very well, and it has held up very well. As you can see, I mounted as far up to the forend as I could as, and still be able to retain the collapsing. It's storing itself into itself. On the back end here, all I did was took the butt cap off right here, drilled a hole in there, and again, a sling stud with a nut and washer on the back, mounted it right to it. Again, no problem at all. This is an excellent solid setup if you wanted to have that natural feel uh, of a sling, two-point sling. I didn't really like the single-point setups that I had on there, so this is a great addition. Next thing I did was I was running this Olight PL Valkyrie on the side here. Again, I modified this, the forend by dropping a MOE rail, which allowed me to run this nice little compact weapon light on here, and it was detachable as well. But the problem with this is I never I had to keep detaching it, or I didn't want it to get turned on whenever it's stored into a backpack, possibly by getting these buttons pushed. I always had to take the battery out or take this thing off. I wanted to eliminate all of that. So right now what I'm running is this is Olight's new M2R Pro Warrior. This is an 1800 lumen, 300 meter throw weapon light or tactical light, however you want to use it. I have it used as a weapon light on the back with the optional tail cap with pressure switch right here. This is a very strong magnetic tail cap and you can see it is magnetic so that means I don't have to remove this tail cap to put on a tail cap that runs a pressure switch. It's magnetic, goes right on there and works with the pressure switch on the side without having to change out the back end of the flashlight. This is really nice because it's not going to accidentally get turned on. When you say, oh, you got a pressure switch on the side, you might get that pushed on there. Well, the nice thing about this magnetic switch here is that you can disconnect it, store it right onto the barrel, and there you go. There's no way you can accidentally turn that on or it's actually not as easily turned on as this button switch right here. It has two buttons on it and you can see rubbing up against that, it's not turning on. You have to deliberately push these. This one actually has a raised rim on the outside there. You can see that it's gonna protect that from accidentally getting pushed. And again, that also takes more of a deliberate push on there. And you can see there's two settings depending on how hard you push this button in here. Great little weapon light here, for, especially for this little setup that I'm going for. If you're storing this into a backpack, you don't want it actually burning your backpack from heating up or just killing your battery. So a great little light to have. Again, that was the Olight M2R Pro Warrior. I'll have the link in the description box down below if you wanted to get a closer look at that one. Uh, they also have a flashlight mount that you can mount for Picatinny. Um, I was going to use that, but it would have covered, this little knob right here would have covered my, uh, my button for a takedown. So I had to run a Magpul. This is Magpul's Picatinny weapon light here. This works great. It's a polymer type, uh, uh, the initial mounting area right here, but these rings, I believe, are aluminum. Uh, so it's a great little setup right here. The nice thing about having this light on here is that when you turn this on, it eliminates your front post right there, and it also, of course, lights up everything in front of that. Being running peep sights on there, which we'll go ahead and jump right into that. These are a big improvement over Ruger's factory barrel mounted uh, front and rear sight. This is tech sights. These are again, GI style sights. I'll annotate exactly what model this is, but these things are great. They are a lot higher. 
which allowed me to run the higher comb, which gave me more storage space. And we'll get into that here in just a second. But again, these are tech sites. And again, I'll annotate it. Great addition to have if you're wanting to run just iron sights alone. These are a much better sight picture, uh, easier to acquire than Ruger's sent, uh, standard you know, factory sights. Fully uh, up and down adjustable up front and left and right adjustable in the rear. They also sell a different model that is fully adjustable in the rear. So if you want to do all your adjustments there, you could do so. In hindsight, I cannot co-witness these with my red dot sight that is mounted on the Magpul uh, red dot mount. This sits just too high to be able to co-witness even these higher setting up uh, tech sites. What I would have done if I had to do this again was tech site sells a railed uh, rear sight that mounts directly to the Ruger factory rail and you can drop your red dot on there and complete co-witness. So in hindsight, that's what I would have done, but learn from my mistakes and there you go. But these tech sites are great to have. Uh, again, if I haven't mentioned it, this is a uh, Holosun's uh, red dot here, on here. This is a 2MOA red dot. It is their HS403A. This is a 2MOA 50,000 hour runtime. I have that link down below again through Optics Planet with a discount code. If you wanted to get a closer look at this, it's a great little option to have, especially on a survival rifle like this one right here. Uh, again, this is, uh, this is the tail cap switch here. Let's just go a little further into it. And here is the switch I have mounted with double-sided sticky tape. Momentary, hold it down, let it go, or you have your on off. Great little thing to have on your fore end right there if you're running a weapon mounted light so you don't have to reach over there and click that button. So I've gone through quite a few changes right here. We'll just get back into the back end of it here. Because I can run the higher comb, I can store more stuff inside of there. You can see I have a thermal blanket taped up and stuffed inside of that comb height right there. Excellent to have more storage space on the back end of this now because I'm running higher iron sights. Uh, I also have like a razor in there, an extra magazine, 50 rounds of various 22 LR, everything from quiet rounds to, you know, velocitors to the standard mini mags, which this rifle is sighted in for. You can see in the back here, I have taken out some of the dividers and added a Velcro in there. This allows me to store every tool required to take apart this entire rifle, this entire stock, remove all my accessories if I need to, and store them quietly into the back there underneath this box of 50 rounds. Store it in there just nicely, no problem at all. Close it up, and it's not too loud at all. So again, this is my, uh, whoops. <laughs> See, this is why it's nice to be able to take that tail switch off, boom. Uh, so again, what I'm storing this into is, this is Roaring Fire Gear sent me this over here. This is their 35 liter uh, backpack or tactical backpack that they have. This whole setup right here fits into the main compartment with no problem. Nice thing about this backpack is the bottom is actually foam padded. So that's kind of nice if you're storing a rifle in there or sensitive, uh, sensitive accessories or anything like that. The entire thing fits right into there. Again, I have a link down below for this one as well if you wanted to get a closer look at this. This backpack only cost, I think it's like under $30 or somewhere around 30 or maybe under 40. I don't know, you can check it out down there, but it's really affordable. And it's pretty quality, it's pretty well thought out. You can see there's some good stuff on the back here to keep ventilation going, padding, nice contoured straps. I really do like the contour of these straps. But anyway, the whole thing fits into there and if you want it to run your mag pouches on the outside, these are actually Condor's uh, 32 round pistol magazine pouches. Uh, these are not meant to hold BX magazines, but you can see they do so fairly tightly. You have to really stuff these into there, leave them for about a month, and it kind of forms to it and stretches everything out. So I can run these. You can see the retention is pretty good without having a strap to hold anything down. You can strap that to the outside of this pack because it does have the molly on the outside. This one right here is made by Strike Hard Gear, or was made, because they don't make these anymore, and I really wish they would because molly attachment right there, you can store two BX25 mags in there, or you can store ammo boxes in there. You can see I have 300 rounds stuffed inside of here of various ammo. So using this as a bug out bag, you can see I can store this on the outside, use a secondary compartment, store it all on the inside. And some of the other small things that I carry in there is a tourniquet and some medical supplies. I have yet to completely load this pack out, but this has basically been my tote around for my survival rifle. And it does so very well. And again, I have plenty of room in there as a 35 liter pack with two, three, four compartments to use however I needed. 
excellent little pack to have. Check that out. I have it linked in the description box down below. So anyway, guys, this has been my update on my ultimate survival rifle build. Let me know how you think I did on it and what would you do different if you have any ideas. I'm open to suggestions to make this even better. Um, great little thing to have. That's about all I got for you guys. So if you want to check out the links in the description box down below, help out our channel, purchase a sling, or use the coupon codes for our affiliate links down there. Uh, and also, of course, helps out your build or whatever it is you're looking to buy. Get a closer look at these things if you're interested in them. I have all those links down below with the coupon codes for you guys. I appreciate you guys watching. We appreciate our sponsors such as GunAdapters.com, which I'll also have linked down there below, Optics, Planet, Olight, and anybody else that has helped us out along the way. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.